Hi. Um, I have the Module 3 assignment sheet, the revised version, posted into our Module 3 folder. And um, I believe when I posted the announcement yesterday, I also um, linked the, um, the assignment sheet right there. Yeah, so make sure for um, the rest of the semester you're going off of that one because some due dates have changed because I had to uh, switch some weeks around. So in the Module 3 folder, you can um, see the revised assignment sheet. Additionally, I've also posted um, the assignment sheet for our, liter our literary journal essay and also the final fiction essay. So we've got two essays coming up. Um, but we don't have an, an exam, so during exam week you're off the hook. So that's awesome. Um, for the rest of the semester, so this week we have blog 11. Responses are due tomorrow. Uh, next week we have blog 12, and on Friday the 22nd is when the literary journal essay is due. The week of the 25th through the 29th, obviously we have fall break. And then that first week in December is our last week of classes, and that's when the fiction essay is due. So next week is our last blog, and then we just have these two essays. So the, um, the literary journal essay, the assignment she's posted, um, I'm asking you to find a literary journal, whether it's online or in print, and tell us about it. On the assignment sheet, I've posted two, four, six, eight, um, ones that I found online. Um, some of them are genre specific where it's just creative nonfiction or it's just poetry or whatever. Some of them are multi-genre. So I'm asking you, um, there's two parts of this. First of all, to summarize the journal. So what genres do they publish? Um, if you're looking at their, um, their website or the printed version, what features are in this? Do they have book reviews? Do they have um, you know, um, interviews with some of the authors. If it's online, do they have uh, recordings of the, the poet reading their poem or whatever? Um, discussing the overall look and feel of the journal. Is it, you know, super flowery? Is it, you know, kind of edgy? Is it super techy? Is it old fashioned? What, what kind of emotional impression is it giving? Um, and then what their submission guidelines are. So people who submit their work to this journal, what are the rules, they submit three poems or nothing over a thousand words or whatever, you can find the submission guidelines on there. Um, and what the journal says they're looking for in their writing, sometimes they, they have a, a specific, um, like a, a specific kind of emotional impact that they're looking for or a specific kind of things that they're not looking for, how long they've been running, if you can find that, anything else that's noteworthy. So the first half of this, which should be about, you know, two pages, summarizing us what this journal is. Obviously, you're just looking at one issue. You, this doesn't have to be a comprehensive study of the literary journal's history. And then um, you're going to review it. So now you're going to critique the journal. So what do you think about the the quality of the work being published. So you're going to read some of the things. I, you probably don't have to read everything, but read a story, read a couple poems, um, read a couple things from it. The assignment she says, be specific and give details. So um, I don't just want the, the title and the author and saying, yeah, I really like this story. Part of this is you have to actually let the readers of your essay know what kind of work there is. Um, so you have to prove that you read it. <laughs> so um, be specific, give details, give examples, and whether you think the layout, what, what do you think about the layout? Is it a good construction, a good layout? How was the website? You know, so you're, you're being a, a critical reader of this. Is it clumsy and confusing? Is it interesting and engaging? Was, you know, was it jumbled up? Was it smooth? All those things. So half of the assignment is summarizing the content. The other half is reviewing it. If you just spend four pages summarizing everything in the journal and then give me a paragraph conclusion saying it was really great, that is not a critique. Half of this, two pages, has to be um, critiquing the literary journal itself. So keep that in mind. The assignment sheets for that is there. I've also posted the assignment sheet for the fiction essay for this 
um, book Homegoing, which I don't, I don't want to hear any complaints <laughs> at the end saying I couldn't get my hands on it when I literally told you months ahead of time and nobody has asked for help getting it. So I assume y'all got it. Um, so you need to start working on that. Um, the, that's due our last week of classes. So that's due Tuesday, December 3rd. So you have this weekend, next week, Thanksgiving break, and then that weekend, and it's due our last week of classes. So it's, it's a full length novel. So it's going to take some, some time to read it. Um, the audiobook was six or eight hours or something. I don't remember. I listened to it this spring. Um, but so that book, we're going to watch a presentation where she's talking about the book at the Chicago Humanities Festival. Um, we're also going to read two book reviews about it. And um, also something published on the American Psychological Association website about uh, intergenerational trauma. So it says uh, during this discussion at the Chicago Humanities Festival, she says that um, she wanted to explore this idea of, tr you know, the trauma we inherit. Even if you don't know your parents, you kind of inherit some of their, uh, of their trauma. Um, and looking at as this, this story takes us through, so these, these two half sisters, and then it takes us through seven generations on each side. Um, uh, of Africa and America through colonialism, through slavery, through uh, segregation and Jim Crow, all the way up through the more modern era. It's looking at how um, this legacy of trauma is passed down through generation and generation, gen even if he never knew his parents or two generations later, they don't know that their grandmother was stolen and, you know, sent on this way. In the, yeah. So, um, I want you to discuss this concept and how you see it playing out in Homegoing. So bring in specific examples from the book of how you see this being passed down. So having this in mind while you're reading it, you know, can help you take notes instead of trying to flip through 14 character stories later. Um, how is this kind of passed down? We have the symbolism of, of the stone, the symbolism of water and fire that we'll see throughout. We keep being pulled back to the castle in Ghana where you know, these two half sisters, their lives and their, um, the, the generations that followed them split. Keep that in mind as you're reading it. Um, there's a lot of characters. So if you get the print version, there's a, a, a family tree in the beginning that can be very helpful. Um, if not, you can find it online. Um, uh, but dis discuss this idea of intergenerational trauma, how you see it being played out. Um, Evans, in one of the book reviews, uh, puts forth this idea that um, we can understand more about modern life by understanding this legacy that has been passed down through colonialism and slavery and racism and segregation. So if slavery ended 150 years ago, how are we still feeling the aftershocks of that? How are people still being affected by the trauma of their ancestors? Um, so um, you have to prove that you read the book, right? That was one of the biggest issues that I saw in the Alison Beckdale nonfiction essay is that um, people just talked about the controversy or just talked about um, this idea of making, you know, queer people mainstream to humanize them, um, but you didn't actually bring in any examples from the text. And that's what we need. Um, I don't want you just talking about intergenerational trauma. I don't want you just talking about slavery in general. I want you to give names from the text. I want you to talk about scenes in the novel. Um, you have to you have to prove that you've read it, right? And hopefully, if you've signed up for literature class, you're excited to read the book. <laughs> Maybe not this book, but you're excited to read in general. Um, so the fact that we're asking you to read a novel in the literature class, hopefully you find acceptable. So um, if you have any questions as you're going through this, um, make sure to ask. Don't wait to the last minute or you'll have to half-ass it um, or, you know, just kind of skim through the book and you'll miss the nuance. Like there can, in this book, there can be a whole lynching in one sentence. Like you can miss something really, really, really pivotal if you skip a sentence. So uh, make sure to take your time with this. Read it with the intent of looking for this idea of inherited trauma, of how 
all these things in the past centuries affect uh, daily life today for some people, um, or maybe for all people, we could argue. Okay, um, let me know what kind of questions or help you need, and um, I can't wait to hear what you all have to say about this novel.